Wallace, a lot of people get stuck with names they don't like. Look at Mr. Green Jeans. And who in their right mind would name the kid Casper Weinberger? Sound like the ghost of a Jewish deli. That's a joke. And that's what I do for a living is tell jokes. Matter of fact, I didn't even come out of my mother's womb until the doctor said, five minutes, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> that's another joke. <laughs> and that's what I enjoy doing more than anything else in life. Making someone happy, making someone smile, making someone laugh. What a thrill. Every day I tell people, make sure you enjoy your life. Just because you've got a degree in marketing doesn't mean you've got to do statistical analysis the rest of your life. You might enjoy arranging flowers, fixing refrigerators, painting cars. Make sure you enjoy your life. Because you can have what you want to have, you can do what you want to do, and you can be what you want to be. Amen! That's another joke. <laughs> so start visualizing now what it is you want to do and do it. From the Vic Theater in Chicago, HBO presents One Night Stand. Starring George Wallace. Ladies and gentlemen, George Wallace. Chicago. It even sounds good when you say it, Chicago. It doesn't sound like New York, Los Angeles, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> Do you know for four years, Pittsburgh was the number one place to live in America? I was there. I told all the people how happy I was to be in the number one place to live in America. And I just wanted to let them know that all the people out in Beverly Hills are just packing up their shit to get there. <laughs> but we're here in Chicago, look at this beautiful runway. They have this here because I travel them on the airplanes every day. And I'm really getting scared to fly now. I was at LaGuardia's airport a few months back when this airplane skidded off the runway right into the East River. I was there when that happened. I was thinking, first of all, anybody stupid enough to get on an airplane with the flight number 5050 Whoever heard of flight 5050? <laughs> it's always flight 102, 216, huh? 5050? <laughs> They're telling you before you leave the gate, 5050. <laughs> now go on out there on runway 13 and give it your best shot. Huh? <laughs> these airplanes are crazy. And you know what? I want them to bring smoking back on these airplanes. I was one of the first people who said, get rid of smoking. Now I want them to bring that smoke back. I had no idea what this smoke was covering up. People are releasing odors on these airplanes. The whole world is sick. I'm here in Chicago, and it seems as though every time I come to Chicago, somebody's running for office. I think if I come here two weeks from now, somebody's going to be running for office. I'm thinking about moving here myself, becoming mayor of this city. That's right. I'm going to straighten Chicago out. First people I'm going to straighten out are those people that live out by the airport, always complaining about the noise. They knew that damn airport was out there when they moved out there. They got a 10-bedroom house at the end of the runway for $15. <laughs> now they want to complain. I'm going to straighten out Chicago, and I'm going to be fair. I want to be a fair mayor. People that want to drink and drive, I think we should have a lane for those people. <laughs> huh? We're going to have one lane, both directions. <laughs> And I want to talk about the way you people drive here in Chicago. You people drive like you're crazy here in Chicago. I'm surprised you don't have more handicapped parking spaces the way you people drive. You can make a right turn on red. We can't do that in New York. We can't let people make right turns on red. We already got people going straight on red. 
I'm on the George Washington Bridge the other day. A man in front of me changed lanes from the upper level to the lower level. And didn't even signal. But that don't beat you people in Chicago. You drive too fast here. Anything going less than 65, you people consider it a house. I'm driving on a 94 the other day. I'm doing 80 miles an hour. I'm passing nobody. Three school buses shot by me. school buses and the little kids were giving me the finger and all of them. I, I'm in Chicago now. I love this town. Yeah, I'm sick. I'm in Chicago. They got me in a hotel here. $385 a night. That's what I said. I said, whoo! I said, I ain't going nowhere. If there's going to be a show, it's going to be in my room. $385 a night, they don't want you to steal the towels. I told them the hell with the towels, I'm taking the grapes out of this one. Woke up one morning, thought I'd have a light breakfast, ordered some raisin toast. Lady came upstairs, the raisin toast was $7.25. Seven dollars and I told her, I said, you take this toast back downstairs and you take six dollars worth of those raisins off this toast. Right now. <laughs> and I took two of the raisins, I said, and, and here's a little something for yourself, too. Three hundred and eighty-five dollars a night. Maid came by this morning and asked me did I want her to change my sheets. I told her, I want you to change everything in this room. <laughs> Change those mattresses over there. I don't like the wallpaper. Get that shit off the wall. I changed my television. I've seen every station on this TV. The hell, you changed my underwear for $385 a night. And you better change your attitude, too. $385 a night. And I know you do what I do when you stay in these hotels. You're walking down the hall. The maid is in another room cleaning. And she leaves that little cart in the hallway. <laughs> you load up on shit like I do. With your little shampoo and shower caps, you know. I get my Christmas gifts that way. Last year, my mother got a nice set of towels. I stole them from the Marriott. I told her, I said, that M, that M, that's for mother. <laughs> I'm going to the Back Bay Hilton next week in Boston. I'm going to steal those towels, too, with the big H on them. Because <laughs> I got a wedding to go to, and that's going to be their gift. That's his, and, and that's hers. <laughs> and I'm in my hotel room. I'm watching TV. Where are they coming up with all this junk on television? You know, a year ago, they had that thing called the clapper. They brought it back. I saw it on TV last night. There. You know the clapper. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clapper. And you seen this old witch at the end of the commercial? I thought she clapped a pacemaker off. And she didn't clap with her hands, she did it all that fat underneath her arm, just whack, whack. What lazy SOB invented the clap? What do I have to invent so I won't have to get off my lazy button over there and flip that light switch? My father had a clapper 30 years ago. Me. Turn television on, Junior. Give me a couple. Of, come on, boy, come on. The whole world is sick. I don't care where you go, people are sick. I was in Russia yesterday. <laughs> I was. I was in Chernobyl. Some friends invited me, a lot of black people in Chernobyl. Didn't used to be, but they, <laughs> Some friends, this shit is true I'm making up. (laughs) 
So, <laughs> some friends invited me for dinner. And you know, most Americans sit around, we really have no idea what it was like, how hot it was when that nuclear reactor exploded. Now, if you'd like to get an idea how hot it was, tomorrow I want you to walk into McDonald's and I want you to buy one of those hot apple pies. <laughs> then I want you to just bite down into it without even thinking about it. You'll have little strings of meat hanging from the roof of your mouth. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mouth will look like you're driving through the car wash. It's the whole world is sick. I don't care where you go, people are sick. I'm shopping right here in Chicago today. I went shopping. I got that new credit card that Sears sent me. Uh, that new Discover card. <laughs> and I already charged over $8,000 on it. And I discovered I can't pay it. <laughs> Wait until they discover I don't live where I told them I live. The whole world is sick. Everywhere you go, I was in Honolulu yesterday. I was. I freaked the people out in Honolulu. I woke up every morning, I went down to the beach, I put on my blonde wig. People walking by, hey, 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 fella, you better turn over. Everywhere you go, people are sick. Freaks everywhere. You get here to Chicago, you got freaks. I went to a church in Chicago. Church had six commandments and four, do the best you can. <laughs> freaks everywhere. You should come to my church in Los Angeles. My church is more fun than going to the football stadiums and watching a football game. We have the same thing at my church they have at that stadium. Like that wave. We have that wave in my church. They passed the collection plate around, everybody said, let it go through, bro. Let it go through. Let it go through. If you ever come to Los Angeles, I go to a church called West Angeles Church of God in Christ. We have a good time there. You see the pointer sister, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder comes in every Sunday, 20 minutes late. And they bring him right down front. I told him, I said, Stevie, you got to stop coming here 20 minutes late every Sunday. You don't need no front row seat, no way. <laughs> I told the ushers, put him in the back facing the wall. He won't know the difference. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell you be telling that joke tomorrow? <laughs> sick and I love it the whole I was in Hong Kong you saw me in Hong Kong huh? my first impression of Hong Kong when I got off the airplane was why is the airport right in the middle of Chinatown they got the biggest Chinatown in the world in Hong Kong I stayed in Chinatown for three weeks, never did get up town, see where the brothers live. <laughs> then I was walking around Taiwan, I bought some flip-flops for my feet. I said, I wonder where were these made? <laughs> Looked under the bottom and said, just around the corner. <laughs> Whole world is sick. Whole world is sick. Bush is on television tonight. Bush. Bush has got this country so screwed up, we got people sneaking back into Mexico. <laughs> Did you see Bush and Gorbachev sitting down on the White House lawn looking like Bottles and James? <laughs> Gorbachev was giving a speech and Bush was on the side just like Ed. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> Bush, I wish I were in charge of this country. Government is spending all of our money. Look at these new airplanes, B-1, B-2 bombers. There's a problem with the plane. It's gonna cost us taxpayers $8 billion to fix it. Now my question is, what's wrong with the old bombers we had? All the people we've been bombing throughout the years. 
have these people been complaining? <laughs> so the plane doesn't fly as fast as it should, the bomb's gonna be a little late. <laughs> you think the people are gonna be sitting around watching their clocks and, what, what time is that bomb gonna get hit? <laughs> I have things to do. <laughs> Our government can do some stupid things. Nobody can balance the budget. I could balance the budget tomorrow. We'd have a garage sale. <laughs> A garage sale, sell some junk we don't need. <laughs> Let's have a garage sale. And speaking of garage sale, let me ask you a question. What is it that you white people do <laughs> on Friday and Saturday nights? Make y'all wake up the next morning and put all your junk in the front yard. <laughs> If you'll answer that question for me, I'll answer a question you've been confronted with for 10 or 15 years. And that question is, do all black people know each other? <laughs> yes, we do. When you see us shaking hands and going through our little motion, those are signals. <laughs> We're getting ready to go to this place far away. Far away, place called Planet Ebony. And we're gonna leave as soon as they get that food substitute pill perfected. Now, when y'all wake up one morning, there's no music on the radio, <laughs> you know we go. We wake up, there's no music on the elevators, <laughs> we know y'all go. The whole world is sick. I don't care where you go, people are sick. And people are saying stupid things all over the world. Two guys walking here tonight, one guy said to the other guy, it makes you feel like you've been hit by a Mack truck. Now, who do we know that can tell us how it feels to be hit by a Mack truck? And why is it always a Mack truck? I think a Ford Ranger would do a real good job on you. People say stupid things. Never kick a man when he's down. Can you tell me a better time to kick a man? Your foot is just that much closer to his back. I mean, the Chicago Tribune, they said a man was in the hospital. He had an unexpected heart attack. Unexpected. As opposed to what? Hey, Bob, how about a round of golf? Uh, okay. But uh, we're going to have to get it in before 11.30. Because I'm expecting that heart attack to hit me around noontime. People say stupid things. A man died on an airplane not too long ago. They said he died an untimely death. When is a good time to die? I want to hear something on the news like, Senator Jesse Helms died today, and it's about goddamn time. People can say some stupid things. Now let me tell you why. Let me tell you why we say stupid things. We grew up hearing stupid things. Our parents said stupid things. You get old enough to stay at home by yourself, your parents go away on vacation, they call back, they ask you stupid questions like, how's the house? I used to tell them, oh, the house, uh, the house has been sick. House throwing up, junk's everywhere. I'm having a garage sale. My mother could say stupid things. This is the last time I'm gonna tell you to take that garbage out. Well, thank you. God. And my mother could say she wouldn't lighten up. She was a big lady too in Georgia. She was a big lady. They said she was stout. Stout. That meant she was stuck. Ah, 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 ah. I've been in department stores as a kid. I saw things I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. Boy, do I look like a bank. My 
mother could say some stupid things. I'd do something wrong. She said things didn't even make sense. You go up to your room and you stay there until you learn how to act. I'm in my room for three hours to be or not to be. That is the question. All right, I got my act together. I'm going back downstairs. Young man, did you learn to act? To be? Oh. We got Mr. Funny Man here, huh? Yeah, we have a comedian in the house. You just wait till your father gets home. And I'm going, what the hell does he know about acting? And my father could say stupid things. Kids in the back of the car raising hell like kids do. My father would turn around and rip off the greatest cliche ever made in a car. Now don't let me have to come back there. We used to say, well, pull the corn over you, Mr. Badass. Come on, come on back here. You ain't been back here in a long time, Papa. Come on. We got some for you back here. Come on, Papa. I'll wait till you get off the bridge. Come on, come on, come on. Called my doctor, talked to his receptionist, said, I'd like to speak to Dr. Davis. She says, may I tell him who's calling? I said, yeah, go ahead. You must know it all. Go ahead and tell him who's calling. Uh, and, and tell him why I'm calling, too. Matter of fact, why don't you let him use that rubber glove on you? People can say some stupid things. Ask another friend a question. His answer to my question was, oh, you know, six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. I wanted to hit him so bad. Just to let him know there's five on this hand and half a ten on this one. Who comes up with these phrases? Six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. What's good for the goose? If you can't stand the heat, who comes up with these phrases? I was driving here tonight, I was thinking about the phrase, screw you and the horse you rode in here on. But I thought about it, I said, oh, this must be the first guy Paul Revere woke up. People can say some stupid things. Went into Kentucky Fried Chicken, ordered three buckets of chicken, 24 pieces in each bucket. The lady says, is that for here to go? I said, yes, it's for here, and you've got to stay here until I eat the last piece, you little witch. Walk in the doctor's office. What does the nurse say? Are you here to see the doctor? No, lady, I'm here to twist your boots. Of course I'm here to see the doctor. Just ate three buckets of chicken. What the hell you want from me? Went in the doctor's office. Had a checkup. Doctor had fingers down my throat, fingers up my butt. Hell, I thought he was going to shake hands. I did. And it felt like six on one hand and half a dozen on the other. Hey, Chicago! This is the comedian Robin Williams. He's not doing anything funny right now, but believe me, he will. Sometime very soon. He will do something funny right here on this network. But until then, this will have to do. Eat me. Robin Williams, Weapons of Self-Destruction. Premieres Sunday, December 6th.
on the next Boxing After Dark. It's a super middleweight championship rematch. In 2008, undefeated champ Lucien Boutte waged war against his iron jaw opponent, Librado Andrade, and walked away with a disputed yet unanimous decision. Seconds before the fight ended, a controversial long count cost Andrade a knockout victory and a title. Now, 13 months later, these warriors meet again to finally settle the score. Boxing After Dark, Boutte versus Andrade 2, Funeca versus Guzman, live Saturday at 10. The buzz rolled into Charlotte, North Carolina for a press conference announcing that HBO's Emmy Award-winning series 24-7 is shifting gears from the ring to the racetrack. The new supercharged four-part series, 24-7 Jimmy Johnson, Race to Daytona, premieres Tuesday, January 26th. For an avid fan, they see a lot and know a lot about our sport, and I think this will take it much more in depth where they will know and understand the sport even better. We will be following Jimmy, the entire Hendrick Motorsports operation, and JJ Racing as he prepares for Daytona. And to kick off the new series announcement, Jimmy held a meet and greet with 200 lucky contest winners from his fan club. He's a great driver, charisma, character, generosity, looks. He's got it all. He's a total package. I think he's a great guy. Uh, and I love to see him on HBO. That'll be special. You're finding the raw athleticism, the raw part of the sport that sports enthusiasts want to see. Fans will be most surprised at the access they will get into Jimmy's life to really see the inner workings of his team and what he does day to day. It's easy to, to sit back and, and think that all that we do is go around in circles, but there's a lot of effort that goes into what it is that we do. And hopefully we're going to take everybody viewing the victory lane as well and show them what that's like. Jimmy Johnson takes the win. Don't miss 24-7 Jimmy Johnson, Race to Daytona, premiering Tuesday, January 26th. You've just been buzzed. I love you, Molly. Take. It's gonna be okay, right? I have everything under control. Fame concert.
seconds or faster, and Johnson gained four spots on pit road during the day. And uh, of course, this is going to be something that's scrutinized uh, for quite some time. Of course, here on the roundtable, we're going to do just that, DJ.